if you are synchronizing yourself with that universal perfection then it is called ritha if you are going against nature it is going against the ritha of the world if you are going against nature it is going against the perfection of this universe some people may say perfection is a pseudo philosophy perfection is the truth because we know tomorrow when sun will rise we know when after one month what will be the sunrise time this will never change so truth is one which will never change that is called dharma if you are going against the dharma dharma will go against you so it is our duty to maintain the dharma in our life shanti peace if you develop peace in your heart you will develop peace in your house if you develop peace in your house you will establish peace in the society so where come where start where from it starts it starts from your own heart peace begins from our own heart prema is the true divine love and spirituality without spirituality nothing can win in this world swami vivekananda said spirituality is the great contribution of india to the world so establish spirituality within you may do meditation do yoga bring peace in your mind and relieve your stress i used to say stress cannot be avoided but stress can be managed by way of doing peaceful meditation bring shanti bring prema to your mind without selflessness without selfishness if you express love the entire world will love you then prema bhakti will develop when it is called yoga bhakti bhakti yoga karma karma yoga jnana jnana yoga when bhakti becomes yoga if it is a wishful bhakti if you pray for something for your selfish need it is bhakti alone when you are praying without selfishness when you are trying to merge with the core of the universe which is nothing but the divine divinity it is called bhakti yoga when you do your duty with some selfish expectation with some selfish motivation it is called karma when you do your duty without any expectation it becomes karma yoga so make your life as yoga make every moment of your life as yoga there comes the divinity satya dharma shanti prema ahimsa ahimsa is the greatest philosophy of our nation contributed by mahatma gandhi ji to this universe it is a great occasion mahatma gandhi ji fought with the great british company with ahimsa and attained independence without any bloodshed today this world nations are having weapons and arms bombs shells to destroy 150 globes like ours whatever we have collected as arms and weapons can destroy 150 globes like ours where will we go if you establish ahimsa in each and every action it will be developing it will be establishing ahimsa peace if you clean your house that is called value cleanliness is a value and if you clean your house and dump the dust in front of your neighborhood then it will react opposite way 
it will react in the opposite direction. That is not a value. Value is in a common ground. Value means it must be global. Establish your own values. Now I enter into the second part of this lecture. You have to develop a, your own philosophy. Everyone should have, must have a philosophy. Like, what is a philosophy for me? What can it be? Anbe Shivam Tunive Tunai Love all, serve all Any one philosophy Valga Valamudan Any philosophy Valga Vayaham Any philosophy Take your notebook, take your diary Today you should write this is my philosophy. Here in after, throughout my life, I am going to follow this philosophy. Any philosophy, now you have taken enough knowledge. You have gained enough knowledge. You have stored enough, you have dumped enough information in your brain. Using all those things, try to develop, try to write one sentence as a philosophy of life for you. It can be anything which guides you, which is going to guide you through the, throughout your life. The second one, fix an aim. Without aim, you cannot win your life. A research scholar studied the people who are working in the deck of a ship. He asked the captain, my dear captain, after two years, where you will be? He said, after two years, I will be in Australia. After three years, I will be in Sri Lanka. After four years, I will be in Indian Ocean. After five years, I will be in UK. He was going on, he was able to give all the details of the future. But do you know where you will stand in 2018? What you will be in 2020? What you will be? in 2025. Now plan for it. The plan is essential. That is the very important second thing, aim. Third thing, today we need a change. Today, this day is the day of change. Today we need to change ourselves. What kind of change we need? We need the attitudinal change. Anger, stress, jealousy, fight, Fight for your right. Don't try to fight for your right. Try to establish, try to complete your responsibility. This is called attitudinal change. Don't, there is no need for fighting for your rights. If you do your duty, the rights will come to you. Rights will come to you. So that is the third thing. Fourth thing is, don't be idle. Act. Do something. Do this or that. Try your best. You will achieve whatever you want in your life. If you are sitting idle, you will never achieve anything. Whether it is a thing which, which will lead to success or failure, don't worry. Do something. If you do some kind of action, that will lead your life towards success. Then the fifth thing, you will become. Knowing is different from becoming. I know. Aham Brahmasmi, but I have not become. I know Aham Brahmasmi, but I am trying to become that. If I become like that, that is good. So try to become that. These five things, again five things, like this lamp. First five things I told Satya, Dharma, Shanti, Prema, Ahimsa. The second five things are fix your philosophy, fix your aim, attitudinal change, Start your action and fifth one is becoming. And finally, I am in a stage of concluding this address in view of time. When I was doing my PhD, you know all the PhDs are there. My topic was education in human values, philosophy of education in human values. I was going, try, go, going on trying for uh, source books. I tried in Delhi University. I tried in Chicago, Harvard, 
university. I tried in so many places. But finally, a spark came to my mind when I got one particular book. You know, I was not at all satisfied in my search. I suddenly, I was inspired by only a particular one book. The title is Ethical Values in a Changing World. Ethical Values in a Changing World, published by Amina Shilingam, Home Science University. This was the motivational book for my research, edited by respected Rajam Malpi Devadas, and the foreword was given by the Honorable Ayya. So this was a turning point in my research. So I got the core idea for my research from this ethical values in a changing world. Now you should understand, you are emerging out from the greatest university of our globe. This university is one of the greatest universities of the globe. I, I am sure that it will produce more and more scholars, scientists, homemakers, contribution as a contribution to this nation. I know this will bring great leaders to this society. So the changing world badly needs ethical values and I know that here you are all 2300 students are here, emerging out students and you will spread all over this globe you take this message of India to all over the globe. I have a great belief on this institution, on this management, on this great teachers, professors for you. They have guided you in a great manner and now it is your duty to start your work, start your action. I bless all of you to achieve whatever you aim for. At the same time, I would like to conclude my lecture by telling this incident. We are staying, our ashram is in Anuvayu Subramanya temple. The temple is Murugan temple, which is in the mountain. One day evening, a man came to our ashram. It was dark, little bit draining, rainy. And he asked, Swamiji, how could I reach the top of the hill? I said, it is dark. How can you go? But I would like to help you take this torchlight. I gave a torchlight and he just switched on the torchlight and the light was about uh, 10 feet. He immediately returned back the torchlight. What is this Swamiji? The temple is in the top of the hill. How can I go to the mountain with only a light, simple light which shows only 10 feet of light? I said, it won't show you the target. It will show you only 10 feet. If you cross, if you walk and cross those 10 feet, then you will be able to find the way for another 10 feet. Then walk for 10 other feet, you will find other 10 feet distance. Like this, this small lamp which you hold is not only a physical lamp, it is the lamp of the soul. This will show you not only a smaller distance. I bless, let this lamp show you the entire life, show the path for the entire life with greatest wisdom, with great knowledge, with great bliss. Let this lamp show you all successful path in your future. I bless all of you and I thank one and all. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Thank you, Swamiji. We are indeed grateful to you for the enlightening speech. Thank you for all your wishes and prayers and blessings. May we now request our Chancellor Rana Vargal to honor our chief guest with a memento. Chancellor Anna Vargal, respected chief guest, respected vice chancellor, madam, registrar, controller of examinations, deans, heads of departments, faculty members, parents, and dear students. It is indeed my very pleasant duty to propose the formal vote of thanks on this solemn occasion. 
to our Chancellor, Dr. T.S.K. Meenakshi Sundaram Anna Avargal, we place on record our gratitude for having accepted our invitation to give the presidential address and administering the alumni pledge. Anna very briefly enlightened the significance of arranging the lighting ceremony in honor of our outgoing students from this temple of learning. We thank you, Anna, for all the support extended in organizing today's function and for being with us today. We are indeed very grateful to our respected chief guest, Dr. Sri Jagannatha Swamiji, founder and managing trustee, Sri Lalita Ambigai Trust, Coimbatore, for being with us this evening to light the mother lamp. Swamiji lighted the mother lamp with prayer and started his talk with prayer thus reminding us the significance of prayer in our lives. Your mere presence is considered a blessing to us, to our life. Swamiji has shared with us some of his priceless wisdom which we feel can redesign our destiny to make what we are today and change the course in the right direction in the years to come. Swamiji has highlighted the significance of five important values need to practice yoga, to reduce stress, and to bring in divinity into our lives. Listening to Swamiji's oration on spiritual practices has enlightened us to probe deeper and try to implement the same in our lives. We place on record our loving and reverential salutations for sharing his wisdom and values. With your blessings, we shall strive each day for better growth. Ultimately, it is what we hold in our hearts shall be true and what we most admire that we shall become. Thank you, Swamiji, for blessing us students to achieve great success in their career and life. Said reaches the mind and how it is said reaches the heart. Thus, there is a way to win the mind without winning the heart. Thus, our minds are uh, prepared we are prepared to receive your message and I am sure it had its impact on its own way in each one of us seated in this auditorium. We learned a way of life in 20 minutes. Life would never be the same again by identifying one's philosophy in life. Thank you Swamiji for your immense blessings to our students and to all of us gathered in this auditorium. Our deep appreciation and thanks are extended to Sri Mata Raja Rajeshwari Ammavargal for her gracious presence. Your hospitality extended to us on our visit to the temple and the serene atmosphere around the temple is an occasion to remember. Thank you. Profound thanks and gratitude are due to our Vice Chancellor Madam, Dr. Sheila.